Hi. If you're a farmer, specifically specializing in crop production, the most common question I suspect most ask themselves are, if I spend this money, is it worth it? Is it going to be worth it? Will it be a positive return on investment? Is it going to be value added to my farm? Is it going to help me achieve the goals that I want to achieve? And in a dry year, like the crop year of 2013 in Domain, Manitoba, where our C3 crops, specifically our wheat, our peas, our canola, oats, barley, when we were reaching reproductive stages of those crops and had only received anywhere from one to one and a half inches of precipitation, it makes you question if fungicides are needed. And this brings me to the Probably the number one question we talked about from June 20th to August 1st was, are fungicides needed? What value do they add if we have disease or don't have disease? And whenever questions like that are asked, the number one thing we do at Patura Seeds, we do trials on it. So what I'm about to share with you is slides from our agronomy grower meeting from this fall of 2023 where we shared the results of all of the fungicide, fungicide trials we did on our farm, because we severely questioned if we should be spending money on protecting the crop that's there or not. And we did that in three crops, wheat, peas, and canola. And seed growers add another layer of complexity to it. The value that fungicides can bring can quite often be higher than if you're a commercial grain grower and just producing it to sell because not only is volume important which is important to everyone but quality is really important so that's the other thing we we're trying to decipher as well is if the environment to create disease is not there um is it worthwhile and so let's jump right into it first let's start with wheat i'm going to cover up the results first there we go because I know all eyes just go right to those results. Sorry, right to those results. Um, I was speaking of seed producers. Quite often, quality is just as important concern, if not, uh, or as much as yield. And so this was the first year where we did not apply corner to corner fusarium head blight timing on wheat. Uh, we simply did just over half of our acres. And the reason for that is we we're in a scenario where we were anticipating at the time anywhere from 40 to 50 bushel an acre wheat, best case scenario. So we did much trials. And here's the results. One thing I want to share with you quickly is how we calculate the results. And it's a mixed bag, mixed bag approach. What we do, um, with some we did with way wagons and grain carts. Others we used using yield data from our combines. Uh, what we do is post calibrate the yields of our combines with our scale that's in our yard so that we know the number represented on the My John Deere system is 100% accurate. And then what we do is we'd segregate out to ensure that only one combine we're pulling results from because you can only compare combine to combine. So take that with a, a grain of salt. We're trying to create the most accurate results without decreasing the efficiencies of the mach machines in the field. You're welcome, Kelvin and Connor. Um, and here's what we got. Four different fields. I've narrowed this down just to the one product, Procero. We also did use Mirvis Ace on the farm as well. Uh, but to, to really compare, we were able to get 10 accurate yield results from one combine of Procero versus untreated check across four different fields. And we saw a yield increase. We saw a significant yield, yield increase, a yield increase that was enough to justify what we are doing. You can see here in the picture, uh, this is field 23 and 28. And what you can see is three passes of no fungicide, one pass with Procero, one pass without. And then look at this, a half pass on the right side of that picture where you can clearly see where that sprayer ran out. And so 
once you dig into the results, we averaged a four bushel increase, but not every field showed an increase. And that's important to note. Um, so it wasn't every circumstance. These fields were our high pedigree seed, select, breeder, foundation, wheat lots of all of the new wheat varieties. And this was also across many different varieties as well. So that's something to note because I truly believe some varieties respond better than others to different fungicides and different fungicides active, fungicide actives. So keep in mind, zero disease pressure, proper crop rotation, flowering on some of the longest and driest days of the year. At the time of anthesis, we would have received, we were 30, 35% of normal precipitation. So the disease pressure fusarium was ultimately very, very low. And even if we would have had high humidity, cooler temperatures for 48, 72 hours, I suspect our fusarium pressure still would have been low. So what does this tell me? This was also in crop insurance wheat. So the average wheat yield on the farm was 53 bushel an acre, uh, about nine, eight bushels into crop insurance. And this tells me that two things. It tells me if fungicides are making this much of a difference in yield, when there's really only a main stem and the yield potential is not there, we need to be looking at applying fungicides earlier, such as the flag leaf. If you want bigger bang for your buck with the same amount of active ingredient or less, you should be putting this on at a flag leaf because it has a longer time period to contribute to yield than applying at the fusarium head blight. And number two, we get the yield response even if there is no different parameters within quality. In terms of the bushel weight or the TKWs, we didn't see a consistent positive difference from treated versus untreated side by side. Uh, two out of three showed it, but it wasn't consistent enough to speak to it. So that's on wheat. We're seven minutes in and we still have two crops to cover. So stay with me. But I wanna share this trend that we are seeing on our farm. Peace. We did a replicated trial of four different products in peas. If there's any short season crop that I've seen with huge dividends in spraying a fungicide versus not, it is in peas. For a short season crop it is, it's unbelievable the difference a fungicide can make with or without disease pressure. And I know what I'm sharing is just bringing up a whole lot of more questions of, should we be spraying a fungicide even if there's no disease pressure? Or are we just creating issues? You know, it's a whole nother conversation. I'm just here to speak to you to the yield increase that we got out of what I'll put in quotations as plant health effects. So some products showed more than others. And again, you really have to dig into which product is best for the disease you are looking to manage and control. If you would have done a disease risk index on these peas, uh, when we sprayed this fungicide on June 15th, give or take, um, you would have scored zero out of, I think, 35 or 40 is what at least the Manitoba Pulse Growers Disease Rating uh, Survey is. Uh, not a scored high. Um, so from, again, just highlighting zero disease pressure here, but we still saw a consistent yield increase in a replicated trial. So now that's two crops, uh, economic positive return on investment. And now we'll move to Western Canada's baby, canola. We did um, multiple trials. This trial, uh, we partnered with Adama to test out their new product, uh, Maxanthus, on canola and two different rates against some of the leading competitors in the marketplace. Replicated, this is on a quarter section on each side of the field. And we got a little different results in the fact that one side of the field statistically did show a yield increase, while the other did not. The interesting part about that is um, 
Well, I'll back up. It's interesting from the fact that one side of this field had a 40 acre wheat plot on it, while the other side of the field and the other side of that 40 acre field last year was all oats. So I suspect what we're seeing is a difference in yield by product because of crop rotation. But because that wasn't replicated uh, and maybe not producing most consistent results, we couldn't see that. But then we move into another field where we had some proline left in, in the tank after that trial. We went to a neighboring canola field that was uh, just on the north side of that previous field that I showed you. So the same half section. And we sprayed two and a half passes of proline. And the rest of the field got, did not get treated. What we saw was without, this is uncalibrated um, or uncleaned up yield map. So this is before we clean up the data, remove the drains in, in our data. That's what it looked like. It was quite obvious to see. If you drove by the field, uh, the day it was harvested, you could clearly see where proline was and wasn't sprayed based off the plant health effect, the greener stem, the better standability. And then what did we get for yield results? There you have it, a 3.7 increase. And that was replicated four and five times uh, within the My John Deere system, removing any anomalies such as drains and high spots and, and combine passes. So again, call it the third crop out of three showing a yield increase when even though disease pressure was not taking the yield away, it was simply allowing the plant to be healthier, perhaps accessing more water and ultimately producing more yield. So it was a really positive thing to see because we know that the reason why these fungicides are in place is to protect against disease. And we know that if they're giving us more yield before we have disease present, it's a win. If we have disease present and it's protected against that disease developing and onsetting earlier in the reproductive stage, you're going to have an even bigger win in terms of yield. So it helps put the age old question of should I do it? Is it worth it? Is it going to be a return on investment? If we're seeing these kind of responses in a dry year with zero disease pressure and basically all of our yield coming from subsoil moisture, basically what it means is if you have disease pressure, you are going to be much further ahead with these products applied at the right time in the right place. Lessons from what we learned this year. Moving forward, we'll be taking this into account when evaluating should or shouldn't we be spraying more, spraying our crops, spending more money to produce more yield and more quality. I hope this was valuable to you. Um, I love, I love this kind of thing. I love to engage in it. Please reach out to me if you've got something similar that's happened to you. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to understand. Unfortunately, on our farm, we can't use every product and compare everything. Uh, that's why I want to use this video in partnership with you to learn more about the products that you, you're using and having a positive effect on. So until then, stay disease free in multiple different ways. And good luck making the right decision for your farm when it comes to applying a fungicide versus not next year.